The Trump-Ukraine scandal hearings are now proceeding on Capitol Hill with an eye towards impeaching President Trump. And if that isn't worse than roasted opinions, then I don't know what is. Let's lay the charges down in brief, shall we? Allegations were made that President Trump used a quid pro quo to influence the new Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, to investigate Hunter Biden, the son of former Vice President Joseph Biden, and his ties to Burisma Holdings. Concerns were raised that this was an illegal act attempting to get the Ukraine to dig up dirt on Joe Biden before the 2020 election. That seems to be the crux of the problem. Was Trump attempting to get the Ukraine to influence this election? I don't know, and I don't know who might know. The transcript features no explicit quid pro quo, but there are allegations that the quid pro quo was hidden behind the scenes. So we have an impeachment investigation just before the 2020 elections. Hmm. There are some facts to consider in this matter. First, Burisma Holdings is wholly owned by Mykola Slachevsky a former Ukrainian minister for natural resources. It was founded in 2002, is based in Cyprus rather than in the Ukraine, despite the fact that most of its holdings are actually in the Ukraine, and has been investigated at least 15 times by the Ukrainian government for corruption since it was formed. Zlachevsky is accused of granting drilling licenses to Burisma while he was the minister of natural resources, a significant conflict of interest in anybody's book. He's also accused of bribing Petro Poroshenko, the former president of the Ukraine who is also an oligarch just like Slachevsky, in order to make those investigations go away. Now these are allegations, but they indicate that there may be widespread corruption, especially in the Ukrainian government. Zelensky, the current president of the Ukraine, was elected this year on an anti-corruption platform, and support for him was overwhelming. Now, there's two interesting tidbits about Burisma Holdings and similar companies in the Ukraine. The board of directors have included several former U.S. government officials as well as current and former Ukrainian government officials. And Burisma has signed an anti-corruption agreement with the Atlantic Council. The Atlantic Council is a non-profit think tank based in Washington, D.C. Its purpose is to foster international trade agreements like TTIP, between Europe and North America. The members of the board of the Atlantic Council include numerous former U.S. government officials and several board members have resigned from the Atlantic Council to accept positions in the U.S. Foreign Service and State Department. In other words, the Atlantic Council is one of those lobbyist organizations with a revolving door approach to personnel. Precisely the sort of lobbying firm which the average American voter wants to end because of the potential corruption involved. Now, I know that people don't respond well to the phrase deep state, but I have to admit that this phrase occurs to me at this moment. The people who are testifying in the open hearings are largely those selected by Representative Adam Schiff, and they all have ties to the U.S. Foreign Service, Central Intelligence, or the U.S. State Department. Most of those whom expressed concern to Representative Schiff also have ties to the Atlantic Council. It's difficult to find any U.S. foreign policy which isn't addressed by the Atlantic Council, to be honest, and that's more of a problem than we think. The Federalist published on October 24th that the Atlantic Council receives significant donations from Burisma, as much as a quarter of a million dollars in 2018. They also revealed in the same article that CNN is putting forward former U.S. diplomats to refute that Biden did anything wrong on the air, who also happen to be members of the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. I'll put the link to this article in the description so that you can read more. Now I have to say, conflict of interest much, Representative Schiff? I hate that this sounds like conspiracy theory, especially since it's not. It's evidence that maybe Donald Trump is onto something and wants to find out just how far the corruption reaches into American government and policymaking. The individuals who testified so far have described a grim picture within the Foreign Service, the State Department, and the U.S. intelligence community. They've seen and heard the destructive effects of the president's policies. Well, they know people who have seen and heard those effects. Or maybe they know people who know people who have seen and heard. 
that makes everything which they say during their testimony hearsay. But impeachment is a political process, not a criminal law procedure, as so many law professors are reminding us. Then, of course, there was a shift from the use of the phrase quid pro quo, which is the normal name for the framework of international deal-making, to bribery, a word specifically mentioned in the U.S. Constitution as grounds for impeachment. Hmm. Now, during the testimony of former Ambassador Yovanovitch, the president tweeted this. That raised immediate howls of witness intimidation in real time and sponsored calls for adding another article of impeachment from the media. I have to point out one little detail, though. If Representative Schiff hadn't read the tweet to former Ambassador Yovanovitch during the hearing, then she would not have learned of it until after her testimony was over. That means, of course, that if President Trump just committed an act of witness intimidation, that Representative Schiff is actually an accessory and therefore guilty of the same offense and subject to the same penalties. But do you think he's actually going to face calls for his resignation over that? Um, no. Just no. These proceedings are a shambolic display of mudslinging and partisan bickering so far, with no real evidence being reported to the committee and allegations of procedural misconduct already being raised on both sides. That makes these impeachment hearings sound a lot more like a defensive measure against investigations into corruption, or maybe just an attempt to muddy the waters before the 2020 election and hurt Trump's chances too. So it might just be election interference after all, just not from foreign actors and not to the benefit of the president. 